So hi, hello and welcome uh, Oliver here and I've got another question. I'm studying biology and I recently totally fell in love with the kingdom of protists. I've been observing water from ponds around my neighborhood but I always seem to come across the same type of protists. Uh, is there perhaps any technique that would allow me to observe more variety aside from using a hay infusion so it's grass hay and water in a jar okay um so first of all as always thank you for the question and uh, let me tell you right away it's totally normal that you do not see a great variety of protists all the time um, because uh, certain protists or certain water organisms in general prefer different types of water quality and as a matter of fact it's like this is that the type of water organisms that you find um, can actually indicate the water quality that you're dealing with. So for example, um, if uh, you have um, uh, water with a high oxygen concentration, then you, for example, will find more paramecia because they require more um, oxygen and so forth. Okay. Um, so it is not like this that you're going to find when you take a pond water sample. It's not like this that you're going to find now all of the possible uh, water or microorganisms that you can possibly imagine. And it's not going to work like this. Okay. Um, so, however, you do want to increase the chance of seeing a greater variety. So I'm going to give you also a recommendation here. And it is like this that you have to understand that the pond is not the same. Obviously, it's not the same everywhere. So there are places that are in, in the shadow. There are places that are in the sun. Um, it is like this. There are the underside of rocks, for example. They, again, harbor different microorganisms and so on. So my recommendation is, is that you take samples from a wide variety of different places inside the pond. So I can imagine, for example, that uh, places uh, that have a lot of light um, have more algae, therefore there is a higher oxygen concentration. But at the same time, if these, these places are too warm, then the oxygen concentration might drop again, okay, because oxygen cannot be, uh, is not uh, dissolved in water uh, very well when the temperature is too high. So there are a variety of different factors. Uh, I think sometimes maybe kind of difficult maybe even to um, to yeah, get, come up with a general rule here. So my recommendation is, is that you simply take a different sample. So uh, scratch, uh, carefully scratch some material off from different rocks um, and uh, put it under the microscope. Um, take some material from maybe some decomposing leaves. Uh, you might again find different uh, you know, protists and organisms there and so on, okay? Or maybe the underside of rocks and, and so on. So there are um, a wide variety of different places that you can sample the surface of certain water plants maybe. Okay, um, so this is my, my general recommendation is, is that you do not simply go in and, and take some, I don't know, a, a little bit of a, a sample from somewhere and that's it, but try to, um, yeah, increase your variety because there are many different habitats inside the pond as well. Um, so that's uh, recommendation number one. Recommendation number two, if you have a water sample, make sure that you take along um, enough water, but not only water, but especially also solid material, because sometimes there's a biofilm um, that's a, a layer of organic, uh, not organic, of, of living material on, on certain surfaces, okay? And in this biofilm, this biofilm is, uh, contains often quite a lot of microorganisms, but also take along um, a lot of um, sufficient water, uh, because um, it's like this, when you let it stand in your, um, in your room, then you're changing the the conditions, the light is different, the temperature is different, and so on. And this means that uh, over the course of a couple of days, you have a progression, a progression happening, and certain microorganisms will start to multiply, while others might, uh, yeah, die out or decrease in numbers. Okay, so this can actually also increase uh, the total number or variety of microorganisms that you can see. Uh, the third uh, suggestion that I have is, is um, even, I know you do not want to make a hay infusion, uh, but you can do an enrichment culture quite easily by taking your jar and by adding a crushed wheat grain. You, what you do is you take a wheat grain or a rice grain and you crush it between two spoons to make the starch accessible. You drop it in and you wait for about two days or three days. And then you take um, some of the sample from this wheat grain. It will turn maybe slimy or bad and moldy and, and, and so on, a little bit disgusting. But there might be now all of a sudden also different protists growing on there because the starch of course acts as a food for bacteria which are then also eaten by the protists. So um, that is basically, um, yeah, these are uh, general recommendations. Uh, if you do not want to modify the composition of the microorganisms, then I recommend that you do a, that you centrifuge uh, the sample because this increases the concentration. And what I've got here is the following, look at this. It's an electrical drill and, oh, no, it's, <laughs> That's dangerous, okay? It, it, I didn't 
uh, fix it properly, but actually uh, you can now see it better. It's like this, that uh, it's a homemade centrifuge and what I have is a piece of wood, of course, I've got this, a screw here in the, in the center and uh, I used, uh, yeah, here, uh, plastic tubes with a rubber cap on top um, and if you add a water sample here and uh, the equal mass on the other side to, for it to be balanced, you can spin this for a couple of minutes and then what will happen is, is that all of the solid particles, they will collect here in the bottom. What you do is you carefully remove the supernatant, you carefully remove the top water, okay? You can actually move it out here, okay? You can remove uh, the top water and then on, on the bottom where you have so-called the pellet, we call this the pellet, this is then uh, more concentrated and you can put something from the pellet um, on the microscope slide and this might also um, allow you to see microorganisms that you normally would not see simply because the concentration is higher. Don't forget one thing, if you take a sample from, of water and you put it on a microscope slide, then uh, maybe the organisms are somewhere in the water sample but uh, maybe right, not right now on the slide because the concentration is not high enough. But simply by concentrating it, then you actually also increase the possibility. So this is actually um, also a, a recommendation. Very easy to make. Um, yeah, take a piece of wood and, and you simply yeah, attach a screw here and then you use an electric drill and then you put it in here, right? Okay, um, yeah, you get the idea, okay? So that is basically, uh, yeah, these are the basic recommendations. Um, now a slightly different change in topic. If you are interested in observing pond water samples and protozoa and protists and, and I don't know, algae and whatever, then there is a book that I can recommend. Now the book that I have here is a, a little bit an older um, edition. It is written in German, okay? It's called uh, Das Leben im Wassertropfen, the life, life in a droplet of water. And it is a standard, uh, yeah, it's now has become a standard book for anyone who is uh, only remotely interested in observing pond water. It's an identification book and it contains hundreds of drawings, uh, excellent drawings and also descriptions of microorganisms that you find. Um, and they're also their binomial, the Latinized name. Um, and it is like this that uh, the new edition I've uh, seen, I think it's edition 13 now that was released, is even thicker than this, okay? Um, so it's uh, basically, uh, you will rarely, what I heard, rarely find someone who's interested in, in, in um, observing pond water who does not have this book. And even if you do not speak German, I think the drawings uh, and uh, the names that you have of the organisms are already enough uh, that you can actually uh, yeah, find quite a, a use for this book because the drawings are pretty good, okay? I can't show you, unfortunately, the contents uh, because for copyright reasons, uh, but if you, uh, and I, made, I put a link to the, to the um, yeah to amazon.com and affiliate link to Am um, in, in, in the description below but if you, you uh, visit the german amazon site they actually have a look inside and you can see at least uh, um, the introductory and closing chapters and also the index uh, but not the main part unfortunately with the nice drawings okay so um, it's uh, the the thing the preview is a little bit not quite representative of what they have in the german amazon and in the um, american um, amazon they don't even have a preview unfortunately the book is not quite cheap okay uh, i have to also admit but it's uh, yeah it's it's a pretty good one i would say yeah so that is uh, that's it um, i want to thank you for your question again um, if you uh, like the video please uh, subscribe to the channel it helps the channel okay um, and um, keep on posting comments uh, and questions uh, and like the video if you if you liked it also basically because if you click the like button i think there's more interaction and then also the video ranks better and more people can actually then see the video and uh, then also maybe more people are going to start the hobby of microscopy in any case wish you all the best leave your comments bye bye happy microbe hunting as always bye bye